I, uh, my personal opinion is that uh, I, I'm not going to speak to the lay people because they're they're a real mixed bag. As to the priests, my experience is is that they're really good men wanting to do the right thing. That's my experience with the vast majority of them. As to their status, of course, the church has made itself very clear. The excommunication of the bishops, because the excommunication didn't apply to the whole SSPX, it just applied to the four bishops, and then only those who formally adhered to the, to the schismatic act of the consecration were also subject to that excommunication, and if they didn't, then they weren't excommunicated even during that time. The church then lifted the excommunication, so technically speaking, they are Catholic people. They're in the Catholic Church. There's no question about that. The Vatican has, however, said repeatedly that the priests exercise no public ministry, which is technical language for saying that the suspension, they even said this later, that the suspensio ad divinis, which is basically a priest being forbidden to exercise his priesthood, that they put in place over Lefebvre's group in the 1970s, is still in force. So that technically speaking, they cannot engage in any kind of public ministry, like saying Mass publicly, or, or you, actually technically they can't say Mass at all. Um, and so that's juridically and canonically where the Church has made itself very clear. It's just that everybody's <coughs> arguing and nobody's paying attention to the, because they have to And let me, let me take this observation. You know, I, I actually said this once from the pulpit, of course, my parishioners, by the time it was done, I think they felt so beat up by the time I left that parish that they thought, damn, we don't get another priest like that. <laughs> but uh, I basically made the observation that traditionalists are some of the worst modernists on the planet. Because everything is conformed to themselves. So if somebody comes, if the Vatican comes, comes, Vatican comes out and says, the priests don't exercise any public ministry, it's over. They're the ones who have the right to make that, they're the ones who have the jurisdiction to make that determination. It's over. But somebody goes, well, I don't like this, and the church is blah, blah, blah. Look, the, one of the things that has me very concerned is this. The church in the past said that when it came to the, the when it came to the liturgy, or to the sacraments, sorry, specifically, the priest is required to follow what's called the tutorist position. Now the tutor, there's two moral systems that have been condemned. The first is laxism, which means that, oh, any reason whatsoever justifies my doing whatever I want to do. And then there's the Tutsar's position which says you must always follow the most interpret strictest interpretation of the law. They condemn that as a moral system as well. So the church says you can hold anything in the middle. Okay. But not when it comes to the sacraments. The Tutsar's position of the sacraments means you must be as absolutely morally certain that the validity and the laicity of those sacraments are occurring every time you do it. Okay. So what does this mean? Speculation about whether a particular priest or group of priests has supplied jurisdiction is contrary to the tradition. The tradition is clear. You must follow the Tutor's position. Speculating about a thing immediately removes it from that ambient. So you have to be careful about that. So what does this really mean? It reminds me of the prophecy of St. Francis. If you ever get a chance, get on the internet. Just type in the prophecy of St. Francis. And one of the things he says in there, he says there's going to come a time when there's going to be a multiplication of opinions. And this is where we're at today. You know, the Vatican comes out and says X. And then 15 other people who have no jurisdiction are saying all sorts of different things in relationship to it. This is a problem. I once said to people, I said, you know, not Vatican to itself, but the actual aftermath of Vatican II has rendered the lay people ungovernable. We're in a stage now where you can't tell them anything, you can't govern them, you can't get them to do what they're, what they're supposed to do even before it, because they're, they're all their own posts now. And that's what modernism does. It makes you the arbiter about what you believe in matters of religion. And that's where we're at, even in the Catholic Church. Modernism has it's infiltrated virtually every aspect of the, of the Catholic Church. So what does this mean? It means that we have to start getting out of that. Who cares what I feel like? Who cares what I think? What, that's not the issue. What does the church say? That's the real issue. Yes? I'm sorry. Like, uh, no, that's okay. Like, continuing with that, like, besides the sacramental aspect, like, would you, what would you say about their doctrine, though? About their keeping of tradition? The only area... 
of doctrine that I have been nervous about is their discussion of the nature of how jurisdiction functions. All other aspects that they say are simply repetition of what the folks have said in the past, which is difficult for us to actually kind of grasp. For example, most people don't know that Pius the or sorry Leo the Thirteenth formally condemned religious liberty. Formally condemned religious liberty. The Vatican, the search, most people think the Vatican II is infallible. No, it's not. To Paul VI repeated over and over and over and over again, finally just gave up, that nothing in Vatican II was promulgated in an infallible mode. In there, it says that people have a right to religious liberty based upon the fact that they have a right to follow their conscience. Leo XIII already addressed that question. He said, no, they don't. He said, God, and this is how he addressed it, he said, God is the author of the totality of the universe. He has a right to be worshipped in the manner in which he determines it to be done. The preacher has no rights to make determinations about how he's going to worship God. Therefore, there is no religi uh, religious, uh, uh, religious liberty. Because it's the rights of God that trumps the conscience of the, of the preacher. That's basically what he said. Later they come along, and of course because of the modernist principles, God gets removed from the discussion, and the only thing you're talking about is the person's conscience. So the fact that the SSPX is trying to draw attention to that, I think is a legitimate question. It really does need to be addressed. Some people have tried to argue, well, it's, it's, it's an important organic development. No, organic development never results in the conclusion being completely contrary to the premise. In other words, the church has, said, the church has condemned the proposition of religious liberty. You can't go around and say, therefore, you can have religious liberty. It's contrary. Your syllogism ain't working out here. So this is one of this is the, so those are like one of the areas that I think that they are right. Whether they're doing it in the best way or not, I think it depends on the on the particular priest or bishop or what have you. But I think that um, the doctrinal things that they've been talking about, I think. Let me just put it this way: the doctrinal stuff that they've said, I cannot find anything in the tradition of the church to which they're contradicting. Other than the stuff about jurisdiction, that's the stuff I. But I don't, I'm not worried, that worried about that. I think if they can just get canonically regularized, then um, where they get the actual the ordinary jurisdiction, I think that the, those things will just get cleaned up pretty quick. Okay. Uh, if you'll kneel, if you're capable, if you can't sit, I'll give you a blessing. Benediction down on the floor, 10 feet, pod 3 sit feet, and spit a few seven to share, and super bonus, sit to money at center. Amen.